What's going on everybody? Welcome to another New York Giants video and in this video I'm going to discuss some good and some bad news regarding Big Blue and the New York Football Giants. So folks before I dive into today's topics make sure to go check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. Uh, let's start with the bad. James Bradbury signs with the Philadelphia Eagles on a one-year $10 million deal. The deal is $7.5 million of guaranteed money with two and a half on um, based off incentives. And the Eagles are paying James Bradbury less money than the Giants are this year. The Giants absorb an $11.7 million cap hit despite clearing over $10 million via his release last week. So Bradbury, it was very unfortunate the Giants had to let him go. But all I've got to say about this is you really can't be mad at James Bradbury for signing there. They were a team that was cornerback needy. They had Avante Maddox as their CB2. They needed a pure upgrade. They acquired a lot this offseason via free agency in the draft. They're trying to contend to win the NFC East. And James Bradbury bolsters their odds. It's not like his market was insane. A one-year $10 million deal is around what his market was. The Giants tried trading him, but there weren't many, you know, good offers out there, according to Joe Shane. So, again, this is not a Giants issue. This is an unfortunate issue that I guess you could throw some blame on Dave Gettleman, right, because of the restructure, putting the Giants in this cap situation and pretty much forcing Joe Shane into a mess heading into his first offseason as GM, although I think he's done a fantastic job getting the Giants in a good situation for 2022 and onward via the cap. But it's unfortunate Bradbury is now an Eagle, former um, New York Giant after two seasons, and the Giants are going to be seeing him twice a year. So Kenny Galladay, you may get some Bradbury, you may get some Slay. So again, taking a 90-mile ride down the Jersey Turnpike down to Philadelphia, James Bradbury is a Philadelphia Eagle. So what do the Giants do? Um you know, how do they counteract this? Well, what the Giants did is they went out and they added some depth. Uh, I'm not sure if any of these guys are going to be on the Giants' final roster, but they added four players today and waived four as well, including terminating a veteran. But here are the four additions. They signed Maurice Kennedy, Khalil Dorsey, Jalen Holmes, and Henry Black. All defensive players three of them in the secondary. So it's very interesting to see these moves made. Kennedy and Dorsey both played for defensive coordinator Wink Martindale in Baltimore, and Jalen Holmes was with defensive line coach Andre Patterson with the Minnesota Vikings. So there are some ties for three out of these four players the Giants acquired. Let's start off with Maurice Kennedy, a guy who has the most experience out of all four of these players in the National Football League. He was a sixth-round pick in 2016. Good length for a corner, 6'1", between 190 and 200 pounds. Spent his first four years with the Baltimore Ravens. Also spent time with the Cowboys and the Jets. The biggest thing about him, his first three years of his career, he dealt with a lot of injuries, a thigh injury, a hamstring injury. Uh, just to name a couple. And in 40 regular season games, he had five starts, 71 tackles, one pick, six passes defended. And 2019 was his real standout year where he had 46 tackles, five passes defended, and one interception. Now, he does have experience playing the boundary corner and Wink's defense. I don't think he's going to get to that point because despite the Giants losing James Bradbury, there's still a lot of depth in the cornerback room. It's just not as good without James Bradbury. You have a Dory Jackson, you have Aaron Robinson, Darnay Holmes, Cordell Flott, Rodarius Williams coming back. So it'll be interesting to see how the Giants manage their cornerback room this offseason and heading into the preseason and training camp. And right now it looks like there's going to be a lot of competition after a Dory Jackson. So uh, Kennedy is the first addition, and Khalil Dorsey is the next. 5'9", 181, an undrafted free agent in 2020 out of Northern Arizona. Played six games for the Ravens in 2020, then spent the final eight weeks of his rookie year and all of last year 
on injured reserve with a shoulder injury. So again, another guy who injuries have really hindered made the Ravens roster as a UDFA uh, six games in 2020 under wink, one tackle, one special teams tackle, not much more to go over Khalil Dorsey. He could be a contributor. Uh, he could be a cut guy. He's more likely to be a cut guy for me. Um, maybe he'll teach some of these current Giants players that don't have previous ties to link the scheme a little bit. I'm not so sure. This is a competition and camp body, in my opinion. Jalen Holmes, this is one of these four signings that I think could be something with the Giants. And what I mean by that is a guy that I think could possibly make this roster. Jalen Holmes, 6'5", 283, spent three years with the Minnesota Vikings, spent last year with the Saints, fourth round pick in 2018. So he's coming off his rookie deal, has played in 33 games with 10 starts. Two postseason games played in 2019, and his career numbers aren't bad. 61 tackles, one sack, six tackles for loss. And 2020 was the year that he really, you know, had a decent season. The Vikings defensive line was not good that year. This was pre-Dalvin Tomlinson, and then Michael Pierce opted out due to COVID. So the Vikings were at slim pickings amongst their defensive line. In 2020, Holmes wound up starting nine games at 36 tackles, two in the backfield, four QB hits, and two passive defendants. So a versatile toolbox for Jalen Holmes, and this could bode well for him on this Giants defensive line. That does not have many bodies, and the Giants also released a defensive lineman earlier today, So, which I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit as well. But, um, you know, I think outside of Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams, there's not really a lock to make this roster after those guys. You're looking at Jelly Ellis, who's going to make the team as the nose tackle, but that's not what Jalen Holmes is. Uh, he's a three tech, and that's what he's going to play. Uh, he played the four tech at um, in Minnesota. I think we're going to see a mix of three, four, and four, three in Wink scheme. So it'll be interesting how. Holmes is mixed in, but again, after those top three guys, there's really not much cooking for the Giants at that position. Again, B.J. Hill is gone. Dalvin Tomlinson's been gone. Austin Johnson is gone. So the Giants have some work to do in that department as well, especially when you're going up against three good running backs in the division in Miles Sanders, Antonio Gibson, and Ezekiel Elliott. I almost said Tony Pollard. Technically, that's four. But anyway, the fourth signing is safety Henry Black. Six foot, 204, UDFA with the Packers in 2020, played in 25 regular season games, three in the postseason over the course of the last two years. 27 tackles, one pick, two passes defended, and two forced fumbles. And this is a guy who spent some time on Green Bay's 53-man roster this past season, played in all 18 games. Had 38 tackles, two passes defended, a pick, and a forced fumble. This is a guy that could buy a special team spot. Not literally buy, but he could potentially be a suitor. Um, again, the Giants, there's going to be a lot of names to look out for competition-wise and depth-wise come training camp. And, you know, these signings do make me a little bit excited because all four of these guys have experience. Three have promise, in my opinion. For the 2022 team, I'm not so sure about uh, Dorsey yet, but uh, the other three I, I think will be will be very very uh, good contributors in training camp, and hopefully, you know, maybe one or two of them could crack the roster. Who knows? But some other moves the Giants did have to clear four bodies to make room for these four, so they waived cornerback Brian Lewerke, who spent majority of last season on the practice squad for the Giants. Raymond Johnson the third guy some people liked, a UDFA who made the Giants 53-man last year. Jordan Mosley, defensive back, who was a rookie minicamp tryout and was just signed on Saturday, so four days later he's gone, and they terminated linebacker Trent Harris, a guy that a lot of people liked, including many content, uh, content creators. So out of these four releases, I think the most notable name here is Trent Harris because, again, the Giants did not have much of an edge rushing unit before this offseason. Now they added 
Kayvon Thibodeau via the draft and Jahad Ward in free agency. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But with these four guys, again, Trent Harris, two years with the Giants, played in eight games, two starts. I don't think he'll be missed, even though some people may miss him as like a value guy. Like people missed Alex Tanny when he was released, but he really didn't do much. But anyway, Raymond Johnson, the third played in 15 games this past season was pretty okay as a rookie had four tackles, one sack, one QB hit and one tackle for loss. Again, not much depth on that defensive line. The giants only carried five to six defensive linemen on the roster in total. And Raymond Johnson was one of them. Brian Lewerke, again, practice squad guy. I mentioned him. And then Jordan Mosley, I mentioned him only on the roster for a few days. So that's pretty much what's going on with the uh, New York Giants right now. And again, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens come training camp. Will any of these guys be gone? Will any of these guys realistically make the roster? I'm not sure. But again, with Bradbury on the outs, the Giants had to rejuvenate some bodies and Joe Shane is quickly disheveling a lot of these former Dave Gettleman players that were on the Giants roster in 2021 and years prior. Folks, before I go, I want to remind you all, join our proud sponsor, BetUS. You can sign up with our promo code below at join125. That is America's number one favorite sports book. So you have enjoyed betting. BetUS is the place to go. Get all your favorite bets live on your mobile device anywhere, anytime. You can do before the game as well. Um, recommended. But again, that is BetUS where the game begins. Our proud sponsor. Now, folks, uh, so just to recap on what was discussed. Bradbury is now a Philadelphia Eagle. The Giants added four defensive players to their roster and uh, released four Um and also the Giants over the past week, and I'm sure most of you have heard this by, by now, this is old news, but they've signed six of their 11 NFL draft picks, including their two first rounders in Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal. The other four are Micah McFadden, DJ Davidson, Marcus McKeithen, and Darian Beaver. So uh, the ones that remain unsigned are Wandell Robinson, Cordell Flott, Josh Azudu, Daniel Bellinger, Dane Belton, but I'm sure they will all sign very soon. Folks, again, appreciate you all watching. Again, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel below at Big Blue Avenue. You can see scrolling across our lovely ticker there. Like us on Twitter or follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. We're actively posting stuff daily. If you love our content, we're the place to go. Appreciate all the support. And folks, without further ado, let's go. Big blue.